Hi, I'm Lily Eskelson Garcia, president of the National Education Association, and I'm here with John Merrow. I'm so excited to be here. An award-winning journalist who reported about education for the amazing PBS NewsHour for 35 years. So, John, thank you for the honor oh, of oh, being here and just it's sitting my honor, next to thank me. Thank you. Oh. You've written a new book entitled Addicted to Reform, a 12-step program to rescue public education. May I just say that is an inspired title because we need some rescuing right now. Your book does a great job of explaining why some of those easy answers and quick fixes that have been advocated by so-called education, we do the air quotes, reformers, have actually harmed our students. It also contains some very wise suggestions for ways in which we can do a better job of supporting educators and helping them prepare our kids to succeed. So today at a time when some people in powerful positions actually want to dismantle public education, and put the fate of our students in the hands of corporations that only care about the bottom line, you've offered some very, very important ideas and Thank suggestions you. for uh, education policy today. And I want to ask you about some of those ideas Great. in your book. We only have a few minutes, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that those uh, reformers keep talking about are, you know, like improving and doing more mm -hmm. and uh, better and bigger. Mm -hmm. And I rarely hear them talk about what you talked about in this book. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of a public school? And that's the that's debate we ha have to have. I mean, I, I think of it this way, Lily. Um, the purpose of school is to help grow adults. Mm -hmm. And just unpack those three words. Help means it's a, it's a team sport. It's mm -hmm. teachers and parents. It should be the community. Grow means it's a process, and sometimes it's two steps forward, two steps back. So one test score is a snapshot, but this is a movie we're making. And the, the third key word is adults, and there we have to say, what do we want our children to be able to do and want to do when they're adults? Do we want them to be able to fill in bubbles? Aristotle says, said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, mm -hmm. then, is not an act, but a habit. So w schools need to mirror, to prepare kids for what we want them to be able to do as adults. You want them to be able to speak clearly and coherently, they should be doing that in school. You want them to be able to work together, they should be doing that in school. I want them to be good civic beings. Of course. Beings. Well, see, there's another interesting thing, technology. A lot of these reformers embrace technology, and that, but then they'll also say, oh, the kids are digital natives. I'm just a visitor. Well, that's, that's an abdication of responsibility. Yes, kids are digital natives, but they're not di digital citizens. Mm -hmm. And developing citizens is part of what you do, what teachers do, what schools do. So, I mean, this is in fact a hopeful book, but it does argue that we need a paradigm shift. Um, right now, schools look at a kid, and very young kids, and they say, how smart are you? How smart are you? And they'll take a test score. What we need to do is look at a kid and say, how are you smart? And how are you smart? And how are you smart? and then and figure out, well, let's take the interest that, that kid has and build on that and make sure that in the process, the child learns to read, write, compute, work with others, and all those other skills uh, that we want them to have when they're adults. So. You know, um, I'm intrigued by the title, too, uh, because I, I, just about everybody that's written a book on education mm -hmm. uh, sends me a copy, mm -hmm. and, and I try and read as many of them as I can. This one, I went, I'm actually reading this one, a 12-step program. <laughs> Why did you pick that metaphor well, of addicted? Because, because I, you know, as I came to the end of my reporting career, I realized I'd watched hundreds of thousands of, of, of people trying to change schools and not really changing them. And I thought about it. Well, what they've been doing is looking at symptoms. Um, can I give you a quick example? Please. The most, uh, the Obama administration focused on raising graduation rates, a notable goal from 70%, let's raise it. And maybe five things happened, only one of which was good. Um, parents, teachers, they would identify a kid who was in danger of failing, and they'd work with that kid and help him or her, and sure enough, graduate. And That's great. a good thing, yeah. What else happened? Um, they enrolled kids in credit recovery, sit in front of a computer for a week and get a semester's credit, a scam. 
Um, they encourage kids to go get a GED. They're not dropping out, but they leave. They didn't make sure the kid enrolled in the GED. They just helped them out the door. Graduation rate goes up. They cheated. Administrators, some teachers, they shared answers. Um, the scores went up. I mean, they did stuff like that, and sure enough, the graduation rate went up. And they got applauded. And they got applauded. And they got applauded for it. They declared victory. But who got hurt? Kids, Kids. got hurt. Kids got hurt. And, and teachers, I think the profession gets hurt. And then when the, when the truth comes out, the, that has a, a cumulative corrosive effect on the public's faith in public education. So I thought, you know, you can do the paradigm shift. You can say, let's ask, how is this kid intelligent, not how smart is this kid? Let's connect with the child. Kids are much more than test scores. Let's figure out, uh, when we go to measure stuff, let's figure out what we value. Right now, we value what we measure. We need to measure what we value. I mean, you, you have this that, with that scorecard that you were checking off. These are the things we need to care about. Well, let's measure them. Because if we don't measure them, they don't happen. But if we value recess, for example, then we should ask the school, how many hours of recess are there you a week? You can measure that. Yeah. Well, principals are smart enough to know that if you ask that question, a larger number is probably better than a smaller number. And so there'll be more recess. Um, so we, but we have to make it clear as a, citizen, as a society, what do, we, what do we value? Then we can go about measuring it. I mean, this is actually a hopeful book. It uh, is. Yeah. And, and um, we've run out of time, so I'm going to leave it with this. Um, I've read a whole lot of books. I've written a whole lot of blogs and articles myself about what's wrong mm -hmm. with that corporate model of reform mm -hmm. where you test and punish and deprofessionalize and, and treat kids like they're widgets and teachers like they're test mm -hmm. technicians. Um, what I loved about your book, John, is that you say, here's how you solve the problem. And we can solve it. it. This is not just a description of the mm -hmm. problem that we all know and yeah. that we all agree that what is toxic yeah. about yeah. about that type of reform. But if people um, don't have something to say, and here's what we should be doing yeah. that humanizes education, yeah. that actually makes teachers say, um, this, is, this is a profession mm -hmm. that I want to stay mm -hmm. in. Right. And that's what we have to do. That's yeah, it. Yeah. And not just recruit, but retain. Yeah. And retain them for the right mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. Retain them because they love those students mm -hmm. and they're able to mm -hmm. uh, set their hair on fire mm -hmm. with something <laughs> exciting. And, and this is something exciting to me. So I'm very, very excited to... Um, I don't plug a lot of books. I'm plugging this book. This is an amazing, amazing, um, hopeful book about how we really make every public school as good as our best public schools. We do what's in this book. John, thank you so much for coming. Thank, but thank more, thank you for writing the book. Thank you very much, Lily. It's a privilege.